In this week's video, we're going to be discussing five signs that you're over editing your interior and architecture photos. Let's do this. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin and I'm an architecture and interior photographer and I've been nomadic since January of 2019. I love to shoot abandoned relics, ruins, uh, ghost towns and I also do travel photography and video for stock as well. If you want to see more of my work, you can check it out in the website link below. However, for those of you who have been here before, we're going to discuss today about five signs that you're over editing your architecture and interior shots. and. I've got some examples for you here in Lightroom. The first thing we're going to discuss is unrealistic highlights and shadows. Um, and I think in particular you need to pay attention to your shadows. So let's have a little look at what I mean. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom once again. Uh, first of all, if I reset this image, um, you can actually see here um, what the Lightroom predicted was this, what this was like. So basically this is a kind of combined HDR or exposure blended file. Um, my first thought here is you want to see more in those shadows. So of course, by increasing the shadows or reducing the highlights, you could obviously see a lot more in those, you know, more detail in the shadows here, or you could even like basically see more outside as well. So see more uh, out through those windows or where that roof collapsed out into the distance. And you would think that that would be the way to go. However, by doing that, you're not only reducing the quality um, and, and obviously reducing what you're seeing outside, um, and giving uh, the shadows a lot more grain or noise in the shadows. You're also, as well, um, making the image look overall a little bit more HDR or tone mapped in style, which is probably not the overall look that you're necessarily going for. Uh, especially if you come into something like a print, uh, when you then start crushing those kind of two parameters, um, you can really diminish the quality. So tip number one would be to zoom right in, check the details, and be very subtle as well on your highlights and shadows. So somewhere around here, maybe 18, uh, minus 18, minus 20, something like that on the highlights. Um, make it so you know that it's an outside area, but also the same on the shadows. Be gentle and subtle. Okay, so the next point is adding too much contrast. I think you can really crunch architecture photography, more so than interiors. Say you're shooting this room here, this flat, then you probably want to give a good, true representation of what it actually looks like you know, for your client. But if you're shooting personal work in architecture, ruins, hidden architecture, some stairwell somewhere, then you can probably crunch them and really bring the best out of them a bit more because it's personal work. Um, I make a personal choice, you should too, um, and mine would be that it has a bit more contrast in it. But you do lose, you must not lose all of your, uh, your detail in your shadows when doing so. And I've got another example for you here. Okay, here's another shot that I took this time in Taiwan of a nice cool staircase sort of bending round. It's got a lot of blues, the oranges, and it's got a lot of light and shadows in this scene. Um, especially under the stairs, you can see there's the shadows and obviously it's got the sky above uh, with the highlights. If we grab hold of that contrast slider in the develop module and really boost it up, let's say to 75, 95, 100, then of course you're going to start to see the shadows area diminish. If we look down into the shadows now, you'll see overall it looks fine. Once we zoom in to the details uh, around about 100%, you really are starting to lose details in the shadows. You'd notice this, of course, again, more if you were printing, uh, but especially here, um, you can really tell the difference between what's been crushed and what hasn't. I think the ideal amount for this image is about 30, hence why it was probably set there originally. And of course, you could go the other way. Some people like to have um, a lesser contrasty look to their images, the sort of film looks, that kind of thing. And that's very much a personal choice thing, which makes us all very individual. Okay, that's good, right? Um, so the next one is really to sort of goes hand in hand with that, really. And that's not to over sharpen your photos. Personally, I shoot with a Canon 5DSR um, and uh, tilt shift lenses and wide angle lenses that are high quality. And that means that I don't really need to sharpen too much actually in post. But I, when I do sharpen, I tend to do it in Photoshop and do it with layers rather than through Lightroom. But Lightroom does have a facility that I'm gonna discuss with you today. 
So Lightroom targets areas of contrast by searching for an edge. And obviously with architecture and interior photography, there's lots of edges. So by overdoing the use of these tools, uh, it makes a halo around your edges, your windows, your windowsills, your banisters, um, things like that. So th bear that in mind, but I'm gonna show you what I mean. So this is another image that I uploaded fairly recently, and it looks pretty sharp here at the top section, as you can see. The contrast is nice and there's sharp details. But let's go down to the sharpening module, which of course is under develop, and there's been none applied, as you can see here. I don't think I even applied any sharpening to this, even in Photoshop either. It was a stitched panoramic, so of course was incredibly sharp straight out of camera, and just with uh, general uh, editing applied. And depending on the lens and the camera you're using, that's something that you need to decide for yourself when you're editing your work. Do you need to sharpen it that much? Less is more with any of this kind of stuff. You can see here, if I start to increase that sharpening, and you can press Alt um, as you do this to see what's being uh, sharpened. If I zoom in on the details and really boost them, uh, the sharpening here, you can really start to see the details being crushed to pieces and totally lost, um, really uh, diminishing the subject overall. Again, zoom out and you can't really notice this, zoom right in and you can really start to see uh, the areas and the, the edges of the, the image be crushed and lost. It's almost starting to break the image up pixels are being lost, so on and so forth. If you go down here though to uh, the masking and press Alt and move the masking up, it's better to apply more of the masking and, and highlight the edges so you can see what you're sharpening and then gently do the sharpening on the amount set, set a slider here. Um, that's a better way of doing things if you're gonna do it in Lightroom at all. You know, overdone sharpening is gonna show sort of haloing around doors, windows, uh, holes where the light is, stuff like that. Uh, here in my reflections as well. So again, less is more on your sharpening, guys. So vignettes is really uh, supposed to show kind of like the light fall off within the barrel of a lens and kind of, you know, within your shots. So doing like an extreme vignette kind of looks a bit amateur. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you were doing um, a white one, you know them white ones, we've all seen them, they look a bit horrendous, I wouldn't do that. Don't do white vignettes. Uh, we're gonna look at really doing some custom vignettes as well as using showing you what the vignette tool is here right now. So of course in Lightroom, there's a facility for vignettes and applying vignettes to your images. You've gotta be really careful, as with all the other things we've mentioned so far, because too much means it sort of starts to look a little bit on the amateur side. The whole point of a vignette is to draw your eye into the, to the part of an image that you want to see. Say it was a portrait and the woman's on the right hand side of the image, then you may have a vignette pushing the eye towards the subject in the image. Um, but in my case, architecture, you might want to go through the center into the middle of the image more and direct the eye. With architecture work, you could have dark corners. It's not um, beyond the realms of possibilities to have that. So I'll show you this example here where I'll show you some uh, extreme vignetting. So on the develop module again, uh, roll down to the bottom and we've got uh, effects tab. And you'll see here post crop vignette. And at the moment, nothing is applied. But what we can do is reduce it down to black and we can push it really far to the left and apply a strong vignette. And what we're doing there is decreasing the light in the corners so it looks like a vignette has been applied to the image in, you know, in camera. Again, you can use the alt key with this one and it shows you what's being applied. So we could go the other way towards the white. Now, I'm not sure why anyone would need to do this. I've seen it before in some images. I've not really found a genre it really suits. Uh, maybe if you've already got a white background, maybe there was some way of doing that or you've got fall off on the edges, it's a compensation tool. Uh, that's the only real reason. So if you're using a white backdrop and your lens is actually applying a vignette, you could use this to, to get rid of that vignette uh, that's actually being applied in camera. Okay, so if we go here to the top and we select the radial filter, that's this one here, the round circle. And then what we can do is we can apply like a shape over the center of the image, an area where we want the eye to be drawn to. And you can click at the bottom here on the radial filter and so, uh, show the kind of mask overlay, what is actually, uh, which areas it's gonna have uh, the effect applied to. I recommend having this on uh, most of the time or at least flicking it on and off. And if for any reason it's uh, shown the inside of the mask, uh, what you can do, or inside of the filter, what you can actually do is then uh, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see here there's invert. Just make sure you've got the outside selected and not the inside. 
And then what we can do is just reduce the exposure down. And you can do it um, you know, as much as you um, think is necessary. So let's do a subtle amount. And this is a much more refined way of putting a vignette onto your image and having real control. If we do one notch at a time, keep checking it and make sure things are looking kind of as we really want. Um, it's a nice way of doing things and can give you a kind of a more of a refined shape to your vignettes. Okay, so we're nearly there then. We're now gonna just look at saturation. And for coming from me, that's a fine thing, right? Um, I do love color in my scenes. I love to pull the color of the architecture out and the interior shots as well. I use vibrancy and not so much the saturation slider. And I'm gonna show you what I mean here. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is uh, go to the develop module again and then down to vibrance and saturation. It's actually a final edit, this shot, um, and it's one that was already quite a saturated building. Um, it's got, you know, it had yellow, it was at sunrise morning, and it's got blue tones, gold chandelier, that kind of thing. I prefer to use the vibrance uh, tool over the saturation. It's more of a refined adjustment. Um, you can even um, sort of really kind of um, home in. And again, it's the same with this tool. I recommend kind of maybe zooming in if you're gonna start doing um, big adjustments to uh, either vibrancy or saturation. Um, but I really recommend vibrancy over the kind of more global uh, and crushing kind of saturation tool. Especially in architecture, it's very uh, global uh, is the saturation tool. In fact, I find if you reduce your saturation down and then increase your vibrance, it gives you more of a natural kind of nice pleasing look and still boosts those colors. Okay, so if we zoom in here uh, to 100% again and go towards those windows that are kind of got that yellow glow coming in, and then we start to really smash up that saturation and boost it, and you can start to see where it's kind of breaking up some of that color. It's also highlighting some of our lens issues. So um, what we've got here is more purple fringing, a lot more of those greens, horrid greens sort of mask around the windows. It's boosting all of the horrible kind of elements that the lens has brought into the uh, final shots. And that's something we don't want to do. And we could use the uh, HSL tool to reduce some of those colors out or, or you know, admit them from the scene. Um, but overall, I think it's better if we attack this in a different way. Uh, I also use uh, individual color manipulation uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop. And you can do that with the HSL tab. Uh, and this is where you can find it. Like me, you might want to um, increase or reduce certain colors within the shot. The best way to do this is using the HSL tab. And we can find that just below here. And we can basically select individual colors. So say for instance, you've boosted your vibrance and you've got a bit of purple fringing. You can use the purples here and reduce them because we know overall that most of our scene hasn't got purple in it, for instance, or greens. Um, so it depends if you have got those colors, then of course, but the other way to do this is use the HSL, the color sliders here, and actually boost and refine certain individual color elements. It can also really help to give you that kind of cinematic look, orange and teal looks you get in the movies, uh, and things like this as well. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that and taken something away. If you have, and you've got any questions that I've maybe missed off, leave them in the comments section below, and I'll ensure to get back to you. Uh, if you want to be notified, by the way, when I upload more videos like this, please do consider subscribing and then hitting the bell notification. Uh, that'll alert you when I upload new videos. And if you want to see more content like this, sitting at a desk, chatting to you about editing and Photoshop and all things photography, then of course, let me know again in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, perhaps consider sharing it with a friend or tickling that like button. Until next time, bye-bye for now.